How early should your child begin learning about building and programming robots? Kindergarten? I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet, and joining me is Ian Bernstein. He is the founder and head of product for Misty Robotics. Welcome, Ian. Thank you. Tell us about Misty Robotics. So Misty is a, a spin-out company from a, a robotics company called Sphero. Uh, spun out about a year ago to work on personal robots, like this is Misty 2 over here, and, and building robots for developers. So thinking about how we get robots in more people's homes and offices. I mean, really starting with developers to get them just a, a kick-ass robot that's super easy to program, easy to use, um, so that we can start building skills for robots and sharing them with, with each other. Talk about Misty Series 1 and 2. I mean, how are they different? Yeah, so this is, this is Misty 2 next to me. Um, it's a manufactured product. We, we're producing thousands of these robots. Um, in order to get a product out like that, it, t it takes a long time. So Misty 2 is actually not shipping until December. Um, but we wanted to really involve the community, build a community, involve them in, in the creation of these robots that we're going to be working with. So we wanted to get something out earlier. So Misty One is actually built um, 40 feet from me in our office um, using laser cut materials, but a lot of the same electronics and software, and it's shipping now. So we're actually getting these people out, uh, these robots out to people now so that people can start developing skills and we can adapt the next six to eight months of engineering that will go into Misty 2 to really focus on what people want. And you designed Misty 2 and you're focusing uh, on classrooms and educators with this new Misty project, is that right? Yeah, there's different, di different groups of people. Um, adult developers, so people who want to build skills for these robots uh, immediately, like entrepreneurs, could be businesses that want to prototype things on a robot very cheaply and quickly with Misty. Um, but yes, I think um, students and educators and sort of the classroom is is going to be a is going to be a, a very interesting space as well as, as robots become more prominent in our lives. How are you raising how are you raising awareness in the education market? Um, it's a little bit sort of grassroots, just sort of getting out there and talk, talking to educators, um, you know, talking to people like you, who hopefully there's some great educators and pa parents and other people that are that are listening to this show. Um, with, uh, we, because we spun out of Sphero, and, and Sphero has a very large education division now. Uh, and it's a large part of the business. It's in tens of maybe 10 to 15,000 schools worldwide with the Sphero Spark. Um, we're able to tap some of that community as well. Um, and it's, uh, it's a great, great group of people on that side as well, also that are doing really cool stuff with robots. So you mentioned people who um, are builders or people who are developers. Talk about the program, program, uh, program ability of the MISTI 2. Uh, what age group are you really targeting? I mean, is this for kindergarten level children? Are you looking for, for people who are in um, advanced education, like college or universities? Yeah, so you can program MISTI in a lot of different languages. Um, at the base level, you can program her in, in Blockly, which is um, basically identical to uh, Scratch, which a lot of kids and educators are familiar with. Um, and that's just all visual. So you have a bunch of blocks and you can drag these blocks in to move Misty around or recognize your face or map your house um, or your classroom. Um, so you don't even have to know how to code in written code. And then as you graduate up, you can program Misty in languages like JavaScript. So maybe even people who don't know anything about robots or hardware can now, you know, somebody maybe built an app or a website can program Misty uh, in JavaScript and, and take advantage of all of our sensors and all of our capabilities at that level. Um, but as far as ages, um, I mean, I've seen kids program robots in Blockly or Scratch four or five years old. It's, it's really incredible what they can do. So, I mean, really like a kid of that age could program Misty. Um, but if you want to do something really, really advanced, I mean, you can be a, 
a professional software developer and, and, and be challenged that, you know, at that level as well. Tell us about the sensors. What can she see, hear, react to? Yeah, so she's got a bunch of different stuff. There's some microphones on the top. Um, so for voice interaction, so you can have that same same sort of experience they would have with like an Amazon Echo or a Google Home. Um, she has some sensors up here, which are 3D depth sensors. And this is what she uses to generate a map. So with one button, she'll wander around your space and you basically get a floor plan that you can then use in your code or you can tap on it uh, on a spot like a different room and she'll, she knows how to get there. Um, so we use these sensors up here. There's a, a high resolution camera, which she uses for things like face, face recognition or recognizing objects or, you know, or perhaps you trained her to recognize your pets. Um, and then there's some other sensors so she doesn't run into obstacles or drive off your stairwell. Um, I think that's uh, most of it. She also has some sensors that she knows when you're, when you're uh, telling her she's good. <laughs> <laughs> She's so darn cute. Um, so the Misty 2, besides being really cute, is a little bit more expensive than an iPad in the classroom. How are you making Misty 2 affordable to have for educators in classroom settings? Um, part of it's being able to use one robot with multiple kids or students. Um, so it's easy to connect like multiple people on their computers or on their iPads, which are then programming Misty. Um, and sort of run that code in parallel. So you don't necessarily need one robot per student. You could say one robot per five students and they can easily be running their code and trying different things simultaneously. Um, but it's also just a lot more capability than you would get out of any other robot out there, which are um, all, all, lots of fantastic robots like the Spiro Spark for learning programming and getting all the basics and trying some things out. Um, but we really want Misty to be able to do useful things for us and more advanced stuff like, like sensors like recognize your face and then go to the, the living room and find, you know, find your mom and like tell her, give her a message and then come back and find you and, and deliver something. So that, that's sort of the level of capability we want this robot to have. So what kind of feedback are you hearing from educators? I mean, what do they want? Um, they are looking for something that is sort of beyond like Lego Mindstorms, right? Which is awesome. I was a huge Lego fan, still am a huge Lego fan, but there's only so far you can go with that. And you sort of, you sort of hit a, um, uh, a limit to the types of things that you can do and they want something beyond that so especially more towards like high school um, college as you're sort of getting into that level and getting more advanced into robotics um, there's really nothing out there that's easy to use so that, I would say that's where it really fits in best okay and what are the next steps for students who want to learn more about robot programming um, well, hopefully pick up a robot. <laughs> it's the most fun way to learn about it. Um, I think one of, the cool, one of the cool things that I think is interesting about robots is that there's so many different aspects. So there's the programming of the robot. There's building different things for the robot. So some examples here. This is a, a backpack. So the backpack on Misty pops off, and there's a couple different interfaces for power on the back. And I've hooked it to a laser pointer. So with one screw, the arm pops off and I've 3D printed my own arm. So it's uh, for playing with your cat or your dog, you could write a skill to do that. Um, but I didn't have to know anything about programming to build this, this arm. This is sort of CAD design, right? So you can go into mechanical engineering. There's also a backpack that is an Arduino. So if you're into electronics, Arduinos are a great way to get into basic programming and, and electric, uh, electronics. So um, you could build your own circuit, like this is a, a backpack with a touch screen on it. So you can go that direction. We have a, an engineer, I should have brought it in, um, that is really into LED artwork. So he made this LED mohawk for Misty. Um, I should have brought that one in. 
but but it's more of an like from an artistic perspective you can build things for misty so there's lots of different for students like there's lots of different ways that you can interact with misty that's not just writing code you could be creating hardware or artwork or you know tape a pen onto her onto her arm so she can draw pictures on the ground and things like that i think that's one, one of the pieces that's really cool about robots well, robots are definitely uh, a part of our future. That's very exciting. If somebody wants to uh, find out more about Misty too, or maybe just uh, get in touch with you and find out more about the work that you're doing, how can they do that? Uh, probably the easiest is just to go to our website. So it's mistyrobotics.com, M-I-S-T-Y. All right. Thank you so much again, Ian, for your time. And if you guys want to follow me and more of my interviews, you can do that right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic or go to my website, which is tanyahall.net. I have links to all my social sites like LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter. And if you'd like to chat, find me on Twitter at, at Tanya Hall Radio. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.